CataractCoach.com, soft posterior subcapsular cataract. We have to ensure the highest level of safety for these young patients. Now, this is a very young patient, early 30s, and the patient has a very significant posterior subcapsular cataract due to some systemic issues here. So there you can see it's an extensive posterior subcapsular cataract. We're instilling some anesthetic inside the eye right now. That's preservative-free lidocaine mixed 50-50 with balanced salt solution. We're going to show you this patient's a restart to finish. And it's not the typical five-minute cataract that you see here. This is going to take about nine to ten minutes. But it's important that I show you the whole case here. And when you're doing these cases, your goal is to give the patient the absolute best outcome, to be a bit of a perfectionist. And don't worry how much time it takes. That's of no consequence. You need to do a surgery for this patient that's going to have great vision for at least the next 60, maybe even 70 years. So here's the incision, the main incision we're going to make with the diamond keratome. So taking our time here, we want to make this just right. Barely nicking limbal vessels. Again, take your time. We want to barely nick those limbal vessels because that's going to give the best long-term healing. So I stop for a minute. Why? You know what? Put a little more dispersive viscoelastic. Get the eye pressure a little higher. I really want this incision to be absolutely perfect. You have one chance to make this incision. Now back with the diamond keratome. Oh, that's a great starting point. Beautiful. Advance it. Advancing slowly. Good tunnel length. And on the AC. Oh, perfect. Exactly what I wanted. So again, spending a little extra time here to ensure you get the alchemy desire. See that little bit of bleeding there at the limbus? I love it. That means great long-term sealing for life. Now, measuring out the capsorexis, and remember, we want to center this on the patient's visual axis or the Purkinje images there. So starting the rexus, poking in with the forceps, and we're starting to tear it, and you think, that's the size I want, okay. We'll bring this around nice and easy. Now, in a young person like this, the capsule's more elastic. Take your time. Also, notice the patient's myopic, so a large white to white, plus look at the huge amount of dilation. Do not use the iris or pupil size to judge the capsorexis. I measure it specifically with these forceps. Again, measuring it out again and going across, and there's the perfect rexus. Now, I'll prove it to you at the end. I just measured that it's five millimeters, but you'll see at the end, it will overlap the optic just beautifully. Now, with a soft lens like this, there's no nuclear sclerosis. It's no nuclear density. It's soft. So hydro dissect a lot and do some hydro delineation. And we'll do it again and again. And we want to get this nucleus and this lens freed up away from the capsule bag. Now with a lens this soft, you really don't need any phaco energy. So don't go in the eye and start buzzing on the foot pedal because that's going to have a risk of damaging the capsule. And again, this young patient deserves our very best and deserves a surgery that's going to last 60 or 70 years. So going with the phaco probe now, I'm not going to use any energy, zero ultrasound. I'm just going to use the chopper to push the nucleus in front of the probe and simply aspirate it because it's soft due to the patient's young age. Notice the chopper position also. It's in the safe position just to protect that posterior capsule. Can't risk anything for this patient. So nice and easy, taking our time, slow down your aspiration flow right here. So if you're usually using 40 cc's a minute, try 30 cc's a minute. That'll be significantly slower, about one third slower, and it'll give you a little bit more uh, margin of safety there. So that looks pretty good. A little bit of stuff left, we'll get that out with the IA probe. Now in this case, the IA probe is gonna be doing most of the work here. And we're gonna also go back and polish up that capsule. So here comes the eye probe in the eye. Now, of course, this has that soft polymer tip, so it has a much higher margin of safety compared to the steel tip of the phaco probe. So teasing up this big piece of cortex, we'll aspirate that very easily and bring it around, and we gotta clean up. So we're gonna be doing, doing a lot of polishing of the posterior capsule, but again, it's a delicate balance, right? The posterior capsule is four microns. That's a half of a red blood cell, or maybe a 20th of the thickness of a hair. And so we have to be very cautious. If you break that posterior capsule, that's gonna have bad consequences for this patient, so you can't risk anything. So nice and slowly, we're gonna polish it up, being as gentle as possible. Again, this soft polymer tip, that white tip on the instrument is a big help in this regard. So I don't like to use a steel tip to do any of this. 
and we'll polish it up. Look at that, polishing the undersurface of the anterior capsule rim. I want to give this patient my very best. Now we're doing a great job here cleaning this up. And then we'll go to the posterior capsule. And because that the previous cataract that we just took out, the PSC, posterior subcapsular cataract, was so severe, there's going to be a little bit of capsule scarring there. But of course, that's of no consequence. We can always fix that or treat that later with the YAG laser to a YAG capsulotomy. Remember, this patient's very young, early 30s. Because of that, this patient's virtually guaranteed to need a YAG laser capsulotomy in both eyes, if both eyes have surgery, within the first year of the cataract surgery. And that's, of course, due to age. Remember, if you do surgery on a child, a 6, 8, or 10-year-old with a traumatic cataract, let's say, you actually know for sure you're going to get it immediately. So you even plan for that. Posterior rexus, anterior vitrectomy, the works. But in this case, it's obviously a lot older. It's in the early 30s, and we can be more conservative. So again, nice and easy. I'm going to spend a lot of time here polishing up that capsule bag, making sure it's nice and clean, really trying to be a perfectionist here. And again, the anesthesia for this patient was a systemic medazolam, which is the brand name Versed, V-E-R-S-E-D. And in the eye, we just did topical tetracaine, as well as inside the eye, preservative-free lidocaine, which was cut with bound salt solution to 1%. So filling the capsule bag, look at that beautiful rexus. That is a perfect circle. I am so happy with that. And now let's get the lens in. The lens is a single-piece monofocal acrylic lens. And we're aiming for a post-op target of residual myopia so that this patient can have good near vision without glasses. So computer vision, cell phone vision, reading vision without glasses. And the patient doesn't mind wearing glasses for distance vision, such as driving or walking t watching TV, going for a walk, etc. So there's the lens. Goes in the bag quite nicely. I'm using that lens to now rotate. I'm trying to get that sub-incisional cortex loosened. If you look carefully under the incision, that sub-incisional area, a tiny bit of cortex left and we'll get that out and i think moving that lens around made a big difference and helped loosen that up so going inside here taking out the viscoelastic from behind the optic and there's that sub incisional stuff let's kind of reach over and get it and we'll leave this eye in a beautiful looking state so there's the lens again very careful about lo loading the lens now look at the rexus side the caps rexus overlaps that optic just beautifully. That's a 360 degree overlap, exactly five millimeter caps rexus. That's what we wanted. That's a beautiful outcome. This is something I'm super proud of. It has, remember, the signature of my surgery is the incision, the caps rexus, and the lens centration. All three of those are A plus in my book. So sealing that incision, look how nicely it seals with just a minimal amount of hydration. We'll go inside the eye, do a little bit of angle sweep, make sure there's no retained viscoelastic make that lens beautifully centered. Now that tiny little bit of haze in the posterior capsule, we're not worried about that. We'll see the patient back in six weeks or so, at which point we can do a YAG laser capsulotomy. The important point is, look at that capsule rexus, beautiful. The Purkinje image is right in the center, and you can see the um, rexus is overlapping that optic just beautifully. Again, changing the light pattern here on the microscope so you can have an even better view, stronger red reflex. That is textbook ideal for me. Here's some triamcinolone. This patient's going to have more inflammation because the patient's younger. This triamcinolone helps a lot. A little bit of BSS to swirl that around. And now we're going to put in some preservative-free moxifloxacin. That's our antibiotic. And that looks like a beautiful outcome. We'll just adjust the pressure here a little bit to the eye. That looks good. And the incision sealed up, a little bit of tetracaine on that wex cell to anesthetize. We're going to do a small limbal relaxing incision here to pair with our main incision and to treat that against the rule of stigmatism. There's the diamond blade, and we'll do a nice little arc here. That looks fantastic. And let's check everything for water tightness at the end. And I'm happy to say this patient had a beautiful outcome, and I'm really proud of this high level of work that we did for her.